All right, guys, so I'm gonna go ahead and get this package opened up and show you, in case you're like a first timer and uh, have never done this, this is kind of a pretty good starter pack for anybody that's trying to do this. So this kit I got straight from, uh, I want to say it was eBay, it might have been Amazon, but the entire kit cost me about, this entire kit cost me about, I'd say 15 bucks at the most. And so what, but basically every wiring kit comes with is you get this blue wire, which is almost always the remote. And essentially all this does is turn your amp on and off. So you'll run that from the back of your CD player or head unit to the amp, which uh, when we get to that part, I'll show you where it hooks up on the CD player, but that's your remote. This here, little brown here, and it's really short. The, the, the ground wire is always a short wire because you don't really want anything longer than about two foot as far as like um, when you ground your amp. So you want it grounded kind of close to where your amp is mounted to. And um, that's why they only give you so much of it because you don't really want a whole long ground. The longer the ground, the worse the connection, I believe. So that's why you always try to use the shortest ground you can. But um, yeah, that's your ground wire. This here is speaker wire. This here is your fuse, which goes under the hood uh, pretty much. I always try to do it like within a foot of the battery. So you have a piece of wire from the battery positive that comes around to this. And then from this part, it goes to the back to the amp. So that's your fuse and holder. This here are your RCAs, which go from the CD player or head unit back to the amp as well. These provide the signal like for where the sound actually goes from the amp or from the uh, CD player to the amp. This provides like the travel for the sound. And uh, yeah, that's just your basic RCAs. Any of them will work just fine. And this big red wire here is uh, the actual power wire for the amp. And this is what you have to run all the way from your battery to the amp. And uh, this will supply the, the uh, positive uh, fire just from the battery to the amp. And then this ground will supply the ground and that's what turns your amp on. Yeah. This, this, and this put together is what controls and turns your amp on and off. And then they always give you this. This is like a little wiring loom cover stuff so you can wrap this and uh supposedly it's supposed to protect it a little better this stuff is so flimsy i don't see where it really would protect anything but they give you that as well and then here we have some little zip ties the end connectors so you can connect to your battery and whatnot and uh, a bunch of other various um connections if you need them so that is your wiring kit now we're going to step by step install all of these parts and as i install it i'm going to try to explain exactly what it's doing and uh hopefully by the end of this video you guys will understand a little bit more about car audio and what it takes for an amplifier to work one of the first things you're going to want to do is get your power wire from in the engine bay inside of the car and the wrong way to do this is always if you see anybody run it through here and you can see it in your door jam that is completely not the way to do it and if you do it that way you could end up crimping the wire and it could short out and if you don't have a fuse in place it could start a fire blah 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 but the right way to do it is find any rubber grommet on your firewall like what i did i don't know if y'all can see that but it goes way up there and uh just take, I, I always just take me like a screwdriver, fill up head, and uh, puncture, puncture me a little hole through it so that uh, I can run it into it and just keep enough length to where you know you can connect it to your battery over there. And that's, you know, that's pretty much the easy way. Sometimes you'll run into a situation where you have to take a drill and actually drill a hole in your firewall to get the wire in there. I've done it too. I've had to do it a couple times. I want to say when I had a, um, I had a PT Cruiser one time and I had to do it with that. 
but uh, if you run into a situation like that just take your drill bit about the size of your wire a little bit bigger and drill your hole and then make sure you cover that hole with something so that it doesn't cut into the wire because you don't want that having any um bricks in it because it can uh short out and if you again if you're not running a fuse it can cause a fire now me personally i have ran um i ran my hhr several years with no fuses never had any issues but uh again it's it's all in uh how you wire you got to know what you're doing but uh anyway now that we got this power wire in i'm gonna go ahead and i'm gonna tuck it all along the uh shoulder here all the way to the back and then we'll move on to the next step now we got the cd player taken out and uh what we're gonna do is get ready to run our remote and our rcas at the same time because both of those have to run through the same uh pathway all the way to the back so i'm just unraveling everything here and um so for the remote what you're gonna wanna do is get one end of it. And they give you a ton of remote wire, so you're gonna have a lot of leftover, but that's okay, we can tuck it later. But um, what you're gonna wanna do is unravel this and feed it out the back. Okay, so I got the remote wire fed through, coming at the bottom down there. And then we're gonna look on the corners here and find the remote which is this blue and white wire and we're going to tap into that for the signal for the amplifier next we're going to grab the rcas here and we're going to open them up good and we're going to do the same thing we did with the remote wire we're just going to shoot it down and out the bottom so we just feed those and pull it in through you've got them to a length enough to where you can pull your CD player out. You always want to make sure you keep enough length to where if you ever have to take your CD player or your head unit out, um, it's not like real smush back here. It kind of come up far enough so you can actually unplug the stuff and then pull it out. Because once you um, got enough length, it's plenty of room for it to tuck. So you just want to make sure you keep enough length in there so you don't sell yourself short. But now uh, we're going to move on and uh, get both of these routed all the way to the back. And then we can put all our panels down and all of our stuff will be hidden. And uh, at which point we'll probably try to find a spot for the uh, ground wire in the, in the rear. And uh, yeah, that'll be pretty much it for this video. It's, it's pretty much that simple. all right guys so this is pretty much where we're going to stop it on this video but as you can see all the wires which we need are now ran to the back where whenever we get the box and the amplifier we'll know exactly where we want to uh, route this stuff and we'll tidy these all up also i found where i'm going to put my ground um these crvs have a convenient little location right here where you access your bolts for the actual strut tower and I'm gonna just pull one of these bolts off, sand all around it good there, and put the bolt back, and that should be a perfect ground for this thing. And yeah, other than that, this this whole wiring setup will be finished, and all we are gonna have to wait on is the amp in the box, and we should be straight. Just to recap, we got the entire wiring setup here in the way, CD players back in, and it comes out under the hood here which i'm going to do a little bit of zip tying to this just to kind of make sure it stays routed against the wall good i'm going to leave this portion unhooked for now just because we don't have an amp and i don't want it live so i'm gonna just like i said i'm gonna probably zip tie it off and uh, put a little extra piece of electrical tape on it keep it from touching anything and shorten or whatever but yeah um that's pretty much everything right there uh 
next video we do on this, I should have the box and the amp. I mean, the yeah, the box and the amp, and we can go ahead and finish with these connections and uh, hook the subs up. I'll show you how to wire those in parallel or series, whichever one you want. And yeah, hopefully the next video you see on this car, we'll be able to put a little bass in, and you know maybe it'll sound pretty decent coming from what I'm used to. I hope it sounds pretty decent, but I can't expect but so much. I mean, the subs brand new was a hundred bucks for two of them, so I'm not expecting like you know some kind of crazy sound. But I do hope that you can hear it pretty good outside. So either way, with that being said, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this video up here. I know for my HCB guys, this is a little different for y'all, and if you didn't like it, I apologize, but this is stuff that I do, and I also enjoy doing too, so um, all my cardio guys, if you appreciate it, make sure you smack the like button for me. I will catch y'all in the next one. As always, remember, respect all bills. Peace out.